What's up y'all, Jake Fado here, and today I want to talk to you guys about a subject that is near and dear to my heart, it's been on my mind lately, and I'm sure it's been on a lot of your minds as well. I want to talk about, you know, the rise and fall of the Pokemon TCG and how we can fix it. How can we turn the hobby back to the way it used to be? But before we can do that, we need a little bit of context of how the hobby got here. Well, first off, Pokemon began to gain a lot of popularity in March of 2020, right when COVID became a really big thing around the world. People were getting back into the hobby with their kids because everybody was trapped at home. It was fun that, you know, it was something that they could do from their home home it gave them a purpose in just not sitting at home but they were putting together collections with their families and collecting again and it was a lot of fun for a lot of people and so we had a, a small boom of the people coming back to the hobby and getting into the hobby for the first time and it was a great thing there was still products on the shelves there was still a lot of people but you know channels started to get more views because more people were into the hobby and so there was a lot more views going on and so it was a great thing for the community and then what a lot of people attribute to the downfall of the pokemon tcg happened in august or September of 2020 when um, I believe it was actually September or November of 2020 when Logan Paul had his uh, first edition box break now a lot of people like to pin all the blame on Logan Paul it's not all his fault it's not his fault for the way that the the TCG turned out it's not his fault what he did was he had a first edition box break a box break is something that has been done on YouTube for as long as people can you know as long as there's been Pokemon content on YouTube there was a box break it's where you buy a pack the person opens up the pack on the stream and then he ships it out to you that's what Logan did they were about ten thousand dollars for a first edition booster pack now that was a little expensive at the time but not crazy expensive and when you consider the fact of the premium that was around it the, the hundreds of thousands of views that that stream was getting the shout out that he was giving to you if you were a small channel i mean it, it wasn't that crazy to hear of and so it, because of that people attribute and say that was the issue when logan paul himself was not the issue but his um appraiser i guess uh is what you would call him was really the issue uh the collectibles guru also known as jake uh he's just a joke to the hobby uh he doesn't know anything about you know pokemon cards but he pretends like he does he doesn't know the market values or anything if you go look at his tiktoks right now collectibles guru he's got a bunch of crap on there he, he just pulls stuff out of his butt he doesn't know what he's talking about same with his you know psa 10 uh bulbasaur was worth 30k in the first edition mm, that's not even near accurate and his psa 10 prices were inaccurate all over the board uh they, they were very high for the time which a lot of people say that he purposely did uh now that he purposely did to boost the market which it worked uh if you, it worked at the time it worked to boost the market and you know so he just gave a lot of you know bogus numbers and a lot of bogus stuff and because of the numbers that he gave it inspired scalpers to get out there and try to make money if you look at his tiktoks he's all about making money with pokemon cards and stuff like that which is fine i don't have issues with people buying pokemon cards then to just get them graded and reselling them that's that's fine just don't use your you know influence even though collectible guru doesn't have any influence he had a 10 seconds of fame and it died especially after that mishap that he had with dumb money uh where he you know gave them a fake you know first edition booster box or a resealed it may not have been fake but it was resealed uh especially when that happened and so uh you know a lot of scalpers they they jumped on the bandwagon and they they wanted to make money using pokemon cards and so they went out and they bought out all their walmarts all their targets all that stuff to bring you know income in during a difficult time i get that but you know it, it they they would use that to take away from people that were enjoying the hobby people that can't afford you know paying three times msrp and it caused a lot of sets to go up after the box break 
After the box break, Evolutions became one of the most desired sets, which is crazy to me because Evolutions is a cool set, a lot of cool artwork, but it's not unique. Is The base set has been reprinted twice, three times already, and it's not, you know, it's great artwork, but it's not nothing special. It's definitely not worth a thousand dollars a booster box. It is definitely not when the best card in the whole set is the Hollow Charizard, and it's only worth a hundred dollars. And it's definitely not worth that. You can't even make your money off that when people are selling it at $15, $30 a pack. That's crazy. That's that's crazy money. And so we saw scalpers jump into here. And that's what really ruined the hobby. Where you and I, the average Joe, cannot go into Walmart or Target or Myers or anywhere like that and find Pokemon cards like that. And we can't buy any online because there are bots that are buying everything out and is making it very frustrating for the average consumer to be able to get Pokemon cards. It's very frustrating and is very is killing the hobby. I've had so many friends say they're done. They're not collecting Pokemon cards anymore. They're getting so behind in the sets that they feel like there's no reason to even try anymore. They don't think that they can continue collecting and it's so sad. Um, and so there was a great supply and demand right now. The supply is is there, but it's bought up by scalpers and is selling for three times the MSRP. And the demand is high because, of course, people were coming in during COVID after Logan Paul's box break. People started getting into the hobby as well. So the demand is there. You have a lot of people that have come in to the hobby. and But you're screaming at me. Jay, how can we fix this? How can we return the hobby back to normal? And there's three things that are going to have to happen for us to be able to return this hobby back to normal. The first thing is we have to band together and not pay over MSRP. We have to say, no, we're not paying these scout prices. The only reason scalpers continue to scout is because people give in and pay those prices. Now, and I understand, like, I can't afford to pay you know, $100, $120 for a Shining Fates ETB that costs $50. I can't afford to do that. I can't afford to pay $75 for a, a tin that has six packs in it of Shining Fates. I can't afford to do that. I can't afford to pay $90 for a Vivid Voltage ETB. I haven't been able to open uh, Vivid Voltage, but like three packs uh, since it came out because there's none on the shelves and I can't afford the prices that they're doing. And so the average person like me and you, we have to band together and say, hey, we're not going to pay over MSRP, especially the scalpers. We're not going to do those things. What we also need is we need creators to stand up and band together. Big creators like Randolph Pokemon and Real Breaking Nate and Leonhart and uh, Max Mofo, Pokey Rev, all those big name YouTubers. We need you to stand with the little guys. We need you not to give in and pay above MSRP because we're, we can't do it. And if you guys just go and you're buying cases behind, you know, you're buying cases. I'm not saying that you guys are. You guys are just the example. But if you're going and buying cases of products and you're just to open up on your channel, I get you need content. It's your livelihood. But you're hurting the community more than you're helping the community by posting your videos on YouTube. I understand that a lot of you might uh, be offended by that statement, but it is the truth. Us little guys, we can't do but so much. But if you guys also help and help push and help push the narrative, do not buy from scalpers. Address it. Address that there is an issue in the Pokemon community and let us, you know, tell your young fans, don't pay above MSRP. Help us bind together. The next thing that I think will help our situation and how to return Pokemon back to normal is the reprints that Pokemon said they're doing. They're doing a mass reprint to full capacity like they've never done before. Uh, they're reprinting uh, they're reprinting all modern sets that have been affected. I'm assuming probably Sword and Shield 
to now maybe even from sun and moon to now i don't know what exactly they mean but we do know that we are getting more champion path etbs they're reprinting shining fates like crazy and maybe shining fates will become like hidden fates did out one time where it was glossed over can you imagine people leaving hidden fates on the shelf for other products i can't I, ever since i've been in the hobby hidden Hidden Fates has been like one of the in-demand sets, but it used to be glanced over quite a bit, and I'm hoping that's what they do to Shining Fates, where it's just not bringing in anything. Like people are not expect, like go out there. Ah, I don't really want that Shining Fates. I'm hoping it's like that because as a collector point, I don't care if it has value or not. I don't care if the most expensive card in the set is. 50 cents i like the artwork i'm going to buy i'm going to collect and add it to my collection and so that's where we have to hope that these reprints will become great that's kind of like champion's path right now you can go almost you know to places and if you, there's anything on the shelves it might be champion's path because that set it was hyped for a little while but now that it's been out for a little while not a lot of people really like it it is the worst set from the sword and shield era by the way but yeah, the reprints are coming. They're reprinting everything to maximum capacity. Now, that will not stop scalpers from grabbing them up and from taking the, you know, the products that's there. But hopefully big chain realtors will put limited limitations on uh, people from buying this product, maybe requiring them to use ID to buy it. You know, that some stores are doing that and is working. They're keeping Pokemon products in for a couple weeks because they're doing that. I don't care as a collector if I can get just get one thing every time I go in I'm I'm fine with it I just need one thing every now and then to collect to make a video on it will be fine with me as long as there's product for the community and then the third thing that I think will fix this is just time none of this stuff is going to change overnight that's the sad truth about it it's going to take time for the reprints to come. It's going to take time for us banding together and not buying over MSRP. It's going to take time. But with time, time heals a multitude of wounds. It helps things grow. For everything, there is a time and a place. And so this right now, we have to band together. And with time, the Pokemon TCG will be back to where it once was. And we will be able to record videos. We'll be able to collect with our friends and family once again. And we'll be able to celebrate Pokemon as it's intended to be. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe down below. Uh, and show the like button a little bit of love. Uh, comment down below if you agree, disagree. If you have a totally different opinion on this, let me know down below how you feel about the current state of Pokemon and is there something that I missed that we might can do to fix this? But until next time, this has been Jake Fatal and I'll see you later.